And so if we do not record on the public record the existence of a will, we are intestate. Now, when we die, and this came out this week, a group of you, and I hope that Ron Davenport and, and even Greg uh, Pappas might be on the call later on, And I'm going to answer a question that came into the chat in terms of the notary being uh, the highest office in law. I want to come back to that because I believe that too. But let me explain this point. When a number of you went to a county recorder this week in terms of the filing of a will, discovered that there is still a section in the county recorder's office for the filing of wills, that's true. But that the recorder staff said, without even blinking, that they have not seen the recording of a will for decades. Wills are not being recorded in the county recorder's office as per the original statutes of the estate. Instead, what's happening is that wills are being sent to the Secretary of State or the equivalent office, if it is not called the Secretary of State, and a notice is issued, a notice of probate. Now, at no point is that process now by the corporate system a recognition of the recording of the will. Remember what I said, if the existence of the will is not recorded by their own statute law, then you do not have a public fact, an irrefutable fact that a will exists. It means that when you die, that will you think has been perfected by a notary is merely a claim of will. And if it's a claim, guess what? It has to be proved as being true. And if it has to be proved as being true, then it has to go to a probate court. And everybody, everybody is having to have their will proved in a probate court. And what's happening with a probate court? A probate court isn't simply the proving of a will. It's also proving the claims against a will. So a probate court is not simply the proving of the will. It's a proving of a claim against the estate. That ultimately is how the probate courts, the surrogate courts under probate law are functioning the proving of a claim against an estate. So unless any of us have achieved the public recording of our will, none of us, by statute, in their system, has a will yet. All of us are intestate. And when this group went to the county recorder's office, the county recorder said, well, you can't record a will unless it is approved by the probate court. So the corporate policy has effectively shut down the public record by saying that a will cannot be recorded unless it's in probate, which is us about. But that is how stupid the system has become and how brilliant the system has become. Now, when you go to probate and your parents have died, you might believe that you're watching the end of the estate, the breakup of the estate. Well, that's not true. The estate is not in their system now ever broken up. It's never broken up. But let me show you the trickery of their language. If you look at how estates or trusts are broken up by their... Uh, bankruptcy laws by liquidation, there are set words and set procedures. First, there is a dissolution. That is, the estate ceases to trade. There's a dissolution. Second, there's a liquidation. The assets are liquidated. The books are brought to account. Debts are paid out. 
accounts are closed, and then finally there is a termination. First, a dissolution, second, a liquidation, and third, a termination. And when those three steps have been perfected, the estate is closed. None of those things occur in a probate court. A probate court creates the deliberate um, illusion that you're witnessing dissolution, liquidation, termination, but what you're actually witnessing is merely the proving of claims against the estate, and the language they use is subtly very similar but quite different. First, you have a uh, disposal, then you have a distribution, then you have a settlement. So the final stage in a probate court is a settlement, not a termination. So I hope you see that subtle difference that they're doing. If it was truly the end of an estate, it would be dissolution, then liquidation, then termination. Instead, the language they now give us is disposal, distribution, and settlement. The estates are never being closed. Why? Because we only ever see a fraction of the estate. The majority of the assets of the estate, the majority of the debts of the estate, are hidden from us. And they are substantial. I know many people have claimed astronomical figures, and to be perfectly honest, I don't know what the figures are. But the true value of the estate, and the true amount of trading on the estate, is much, much larger than what you see. And that is why they don't close them. If they had to terminate estates, if the corporation was terminating estates, then their system would collapse. It's that clear. So the simplicity of this trick is they placed a greater emphasis on the public record. They depreciated the importance of the notary and we missed this subtle difference. And I believe the reason we missed the subtle difference was a combination. I believe it was a combination of deliberate disinformation agents sent out to keep us looking in the wrong direction. I believe that we also missed the transition that they did. And I think we were looking in the wrong places. If someone says to you today that a notary is still the highest official of law on the land, remembering that a notary is a position created by statute, by the Roman system, and you can find those statutes, they're still in effect. They were created by Henry VIII, they're still in effect. Then they are not looking at the modifications to that role, which the Roman cult had the right to do through its estates, they are not looking at what took place in the statutes. The statutes depreciated the role. If this was untrue, then none of us who have a will properly signed, witnessed and sealed by a notary, none of us could be classed as intestate and none of us would need to go to probate. Let me prove it to you. If you know someone that had a valid will and they died, then they would not have had to go to probate if it was a valid will. Why? Because if it was sealed by a notary, then it is already proven as fact if the notary's role had not been diminished. You can't have it both ways. Probate is because there is not a public record under their statute. They changed it. The corporations changed it. Please, if people keep saying to you, and I believe this up until the research this week, I truly believe that the role of the notary remained 
in effect the way it was back in the 16th century. I believe the romantic notion. I believe the things that people are telling me. The reality is otherwise. The reality is that there are many ways to get things on the public record and we have been deliberately distracted from making this clear. If you don't have the fact that you are appointed the office, well, appointed to the office, the occupant of the office of general executor, if you don't have that on the public record, then it is not an irrefutable fact. If you put something in evidence, it does not mean it's on the public record. Let's talk about how we can put things on the public record. Under their system, they give us the option of gazette. If you publish in a gazette, you are publishing on the public record. They say it. What's another? If you go to the county recorder or the lands department and you make it clear and the document states that this is for and on the public record, then they are obliged, providing you can quote the statutes that protect the public record, they are obliged to put it in as a public record, not as a corporate record, regardless of what corporate policies I have. If you go and look and you're going to court, you have the ability to stand there, providing you've established your standing, and we'll talk about standing again in a moment, what that is. You have the ability to, to convene a court of public record. You have the right to convert everything that is going to take place in that court to a court of public record. And therefore, everything that is entered and is accepted will be on the court of public record. That's much, much harder. And even with UCC, the deadly dreaded UCC, we find that you can file a, a non-UCC filing using the UCC documents and you can create a public record. They give you that option as well. So there's not simply one way that they will accept something on the public record. They've given us many opportunities to establish things on the public record. And you know what? This is their get-out-of-jail-free card. When you look at the massive fraud that has been undertaken in terms of never closing estates, in terms of declaring us all intestate, in them using courts as probate courts to prove a claim against the estate, in all cases they say, you did not instruct us. You did not state it was for the public record. You did not record the fact that you had a will. The onus by them is put back onto us. And you know what? At the end of the day, we have to accept some of the blame. Yes, they've been tricked. Yes, they've been incredibly corrupt in the way that they've behaved. But it's not as if they've hidden the statutes. The statutes are in public view. What they've done is in public view. The fact they've diminished the role of the notary is on public view. If we believe other people telling us things, saying, oh, no, 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 it's all notary, just do it with a notary, you're fine. If we're going to believe them and not do any research, if we're going to be gullible, if we're just going to take forms that people give us and use them without thinking, then at the end of the day, we have only ourselves to blame if things come unstuck. And that is why they're still comfortable to pursue the system they're dealing with. So what we need to do is we need to be far more clear in any instruments that we present that they are put clearly on the public record. If they're not on the public record, then they cannot be established as a fact. And if it's evidence, then their judges have the power under their own rules to determine what is ultimately going to be accepted as evidence or not. Now, what's a practical, powerful example of what this means? If we can establish on the public record, by their rules, that our will exists, that's all we need to do. We don't even need to publish our will. Our will exists and that the general executive has been appointed, and he is, in my case, Franco Collins, then we have on the public record, one, a will, which means we, they cannot claim intestate, and two, who the general executive is, which means that the judges can no longer presume to be the most senior positions in the estate. And then we